Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And we have another of our um, studies in our 25 Days of Tonalism series. This is uh, by Camille Corot. The, well, the studies by me painted after a painting by Camille Corot. I believe it's called The Rocky Stream. And uh, funny enough, you know, I'm doing um, probably this is, I think, the last uh, Camille Corot in the 25 days. I did maybe 11 Camille Corots in the 100 Days of Tonalism project we did in 2015. Um, Camille Corot is not technically a tonalist. He's a what's called a Barbizon painter, but if you want to be honest, he's really just one of a kind. No one really, uh, he, no one else was painting like him at the time unless they were setting out to make copies of his work or to use, make, you know, basically appropriate his style. There wasn't like he came from a school of a bunch of people that were painting like. Camille Corot, but I include him in the tonalist um, schism because uh, he was really, he's like the the first step, the first major step that landscape ma painting made towards this tonalism. Maybe not the first step, actually you've got to include the Dutch guys, um, which were, you know, 200 years before, 150 years before Camille Corot. Um, their work was definitely qualifies as tonal in nature. But um, when we're talking in more in the modern age, that would be Camille Corot. And so um, I'm not actually, I'm working on like a series. Uh, well, I'm working on it here and there. I haven't done anything in the last couple of weeks on it. But uh, I do have another series going in my studio. It's uh, 25 more days of tonalism. I didn't do any Camille Corot there, although I did do some other Barbizon guys. And... Uh, you know he's a really good guy to to study and master of composition really uh, and you know more and more it's composition that really makes or breaks your paintings well there's ah, I, I say that there's a million ways to make or break your painting actually maybe not a million uh, I was listening to a uh, podcast today by a uh, well let's just call him a modern day philosopher his name is Tom Campbell and uh He's a brilliant uh, physicist, actually, and uh, consciousness explorer. And he was talking about um, <clears throat> how of all of the decisions that we can make with uh, any given thing that we're working on, that there are thousands of wrong decisions and only a few good decisions that you can make. And that's very true of painting. And um, who knows, maybe uh, something we'll talk about uh, on our uh, accompanying blog post. This is, by the way, uh, Saturday. It's January. Uh, let's have a look at the date here. January 28th. We're one almost one month down in um, the new year, folks. It's really rolling by quick. And um, so uh, I was in the studio this morning and uh, doing some work. And I'm um, home for lunch basically right now. And I like to get the video portion of... Uh, of, uh, the daily proceedings done uh, so that I don't have too much to do uh, when I come back from the studio but when I go back to uh, work there I will be uh, just finishing up these 14 5 by 7 studies I was uh, talking about of which I know for sure I'm going to do six larger paintings um, and I'm going to uh, at least be doing the drawing stages referring only to the studies and we're going to see how that goes um, you know, one unique thing about uh, this uh, particular approach I'm taking, like Camille Corot was a painting at five by five inches, so um, he was painting, you know, a good a good bit larger. His paintings aren't huge, but they're certainly larger than five by five. And actually, um, I believe when you refer to the original image in the blog post, you'll see it wasn't even square. So. I don't really think he ever painted in a precise uh, square format. He he did do some 8 by 10s and that is almost square, but uh, slightly rectangular might be a better way to put it. Um, anyway, uh, Camille Corot, uh, a genius, and I tried to absorb 
as much from him as I can. And I, I believe that's definitely something that George Ness did when he came across Camille's work. I believe it was foundational in pushing him out of detail mode and into toneless mode. Now, that said, uh, Camille Corot paints a bit more detail than I do in my work. Uh, he had this technique uh, where he would actually sort of do these little strokes to indicate the foliage in the trees and things like that. Um, whereas I'm pretty content to just make it a brush stroke, you know, uh, that carries, uh, covers a lot more ground. But if it wasn't for Camille Corot basically starting this abstraction process, um, a lot of painters would still be trying to paint every little leaf on the tree that was a hundred yards away from him. And uh, he's very foundational in pushing art towards, uh, well, basically, one of the things I think he was really, really good at was getting air into his foliage and air in general into his landscapes. The, the Dutch guys were good at that, too. Um, the Dutch guys didn't have tons of trees in their stuff. So they did. I take that back. And it was a different, actually, one of the main distinctions that would make them not a toneless as they would tend to have a quite a lot of detail in their paintings um, even though their work had a very tonal quality and when you talk about that tonal quality uh, you're basically looking at the old masters as, as well their, their work is harmonious and uh, tonally unified um, hey this is maybe even more rambly than my usual video narration but uh, there you go. You get little nuggets, though. You're getting nuggets, folks, I hope. Um, anyway, uh, a lot of the times what you're getting with the video narration is just kind of a condensation of uh, the things that have been going through my mind the previous week and uh, distillation thereof. So, you know, hopefully you're appreciating it. I am a uh, working painter, and this is what I do. Uh, in fact, I used to do music as well, but... I haven't, uh, yeah, I haven't really got into that lately. Uh, mostly because I've been working with, um, actually ever since I started videotaping the paintings, I've noticed that I really haven't seemed to have the uh, extra time um, when I'm at home to mess around with the music, but one day soon we'll get back into it. and. Um, I, I do have quite a lot of music that I've done, and uh, it's always underneath the um, our videos here. You can usually hear some accompanying music. That's all my music, uh, not very loud, but it does keep the um, the overall proceedings from feeling very quiet. I feel it's nice to have a little something in the background, and I happen to own the copyrights to all that music, so um, I don't get hassled by YouTube for using it, which works out real good. I do have actually quite a lot of music where I was singing and things, and I don't tend to use that since the uh, the sound of my voice over my voice just makes it harder to hear what it is I'm saying. Um, anyway, I guess getting back into what uh, I got a couple more uh, little five by sevens uh, when I get back uh, to work that um, I'm going to be uh, finishing up and basically just doing a little glazing, a little dry brushing. I don't know always glaze on the 5x7s. Um, I do tend to do some of this, you could call it dry brushing, you could just call it a little bit of dragging over the surface, you know, it's like because uh, the paintings are so small, uh, I can sort of intimate detail and, you know, getting back to this uh, study of Camille Corot, I'm really uh, quite pleased with the the painting uh, that I did here and it has a, a, a nice quality to it. It doesn't, you know, there was a heck of a lot more going on in Camille's painting which I just couldn't uh, render uh, due to the small size and the size of the brush I'm using, but I'm real happy with the way this painting looks and uh, I got a lot out of doing it. Um, geez, I think we're getting close to the end. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, bonus video and post we did on Wednesday. We'll have to see if I get enough energy or initiative to do that again. Um, 
in the following weeks. Maybe, you know, might have some more friends. Um, we'll be back next week with day 12. Uh, so almost halfway through the 25 days of tonalism. And uh, if you'd like to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz. You can follow the blog through there and check out my stuff. And we'll see you next week. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.